If you enjoy what you do, you won't work a day in your life. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 true to life workplace comedies. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at British comedy shows which focus on the employees of a given workplace, with an emphasis on which ones are closest to reality. Number 10. W1A It doesn't get more meta than the BBC commissioning a sitcom all about what it's like to work at the BBC. No one watches television anymore. Well, no. I mean, like, no one. OK, get over it. Brilliant. Exactly. With this in mind, this mockumentary sitcom should be overflowing with realism. I mean, I'm guessing in your world this kind of thing is all pretty... No, sure, OK. This sort of stuff happens all the time. Yeah, no, sure, OK. We follow a cast of seasoned comedy actors and a star-studded roster of guest stars, including Carol Vorderman, Hugh Grant and Olivia Colman, to name just a few, as well as narration by David Tennant, as they try to manage various scandals, get things to broadcast on time, keep up with the trends and rescue the BBC's ailing reputation. Yeah, exactly, and that's why we're all dreading the next story about Russia. Yeah, although to be fair, things have been a bit quieter with Russia in the last week or so. Well... So to me, that's like a positive already. Number 9. Dinner Ladies who knew that a factory canteen would be such a good source of comedy? Presumably, the people who decided to make Dinner Ladies, which has remained a classic sitcom in the decades since its brief run. Can I have 12 rounds of white, please? You can, actually, yeah. It's been a bit touching uh, thingy bob, but yeah, 12 rounds of white, let's do it. But considering it was written by and starred the late veteran comedian Victoria Wood, it's not surprising that great laughs are found even in the mundane catering industry. What I really wanted was tuna and sweet corn, separately. We don't do tuna and sweet corn, we only do tuna and sweet corn. <laughs> I'm not weird. We only do it with a mm. It's the banter between the leading ladies that makes dinner ladies stand out as they tell each other anecdotes and go about the day-to-day -day running of the kitchen. She could have the melon balls. What? She won't eat anything with her face, but she'll eat some with balls. <laughs> Number eight, Damned. Joe Brand delved into the bleak world of Britain's social work system as the basis for this black comedy. They attacked and racially abused a vulnerable man and stabbed and set fire to a pensioner. These teenage lads are animals. They're ten-year-old girls. Taking inspiration from her 80-year-old, semi-retired social worker mother, Brand has a unique insight into the toils of social work staff, who have high caseloads and high stress, but also a high source of comedy. That's what Mariah Carey calls herself on her album, The Emancipation of Mimi. Thanks, but she's about as emancipated as Disney's Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that good or bad? Also starring Alan Davies as Brand's jaded co-worker and Izzy Sutty as the well-intentioned but useless work experience girl, this representation of the unsung heroes who work in child protection isn't one you want to miss. Is this a matter for the police? Well, I've just seen a child in a buggy with pierced ears. It's non-consensual mutilation. Yeah, ring the main number. Number 7. Phoenix Knights Starring Peter Kay, Peter Kay and, oh, also Peter Kay, Phoenix Knights is a look at the weird world of the working men's club. <laughs> We primarily follow failed club owner Brian Potter as he tries to achieve his relatively modest dream of owning the most popular club in all of Bolton. Garlic bread? Garlic bread? Garlic bread. That's right, Max. Garlic bread. It's the future. I've tasted it. While there are some aspects of Phoenix Knights that remain less than accurate to reality, like rival club owner Dem Perry's repeated attempts to burn the Phoenix Club to the ground, Brian's stingy ways are something many people are familiar with. But if you ask me, it was started by a cigar or a cigarette. A cigar? Yeah, why? Two words, Dem Perry. Number 6. Trolleyed. Across the UK, hundreds of thousands of people work in the various supermarket chains, making Trolleyed one of the more relatable sitcoms out there. Are there any problems you need me to report? Um, yeah, I'm still working at Valco. OK. We see the mostly ordinary working days of all the different employees for fictional chain Valco, from the trolley boys to the executives and everyone in between. We just take the flower and put them on the shelf. All right, don't shit a kitten. Anyway, what do I get in return? Is it like... How's about I don't come behind there and kick you in the balls? It's the realistic approach to the often unpredictable world of groceries and shopping, something everybody has to do on a regular basis, that makes Trolleyed so endearing. Seeing the show lasts for seven series as one of Sky One's most successful sitcoms. Has he given Glenn Beef a job? Who's Glenn Beef? Who's Glenn Beef? That's like saying, who's Ed Goals? Who's Ed Goals? Number five, Teachers. 
It may have more than a few surreal moments, like animals randomly appearing in shot and going utterly unnoticed by the characters, but it tackles day-to-day -day school life in a realistic way many shows don't. Yeah, how come you're not married, Simon? Oh, I'm way too young. Oh, yeah. Focusing almost exclusively on the ensemble of struggling teachers rather than the pupils, it shows the dark underbelly of working in education. I'm worried that you're getting left behind. We should be moving on to the next assignment. Look, I'm not giving them to you now, right? Because I have a different plan for today. This means they spend most of their time in the pub, trying to get out of doing as much work as possible, and chain smoking behind the school, exchanging increasingly immature banter. They're quite entertaining. Bunch of retards. Number four, Black Books. Comedy staples Dylan Moran, Bill Bailey, and Tamsin Grieg feature in this bleak comedy about a bookshop called Black Books. Sorry, I hate my job. Like teachers, the characters are also dissatisfied with their career, cynical shop owner Bernard especially, and spend their recreational time smoking and drinking, such were the early 2000s. While the other characters desperately try to improve the business and make Bernard interact with society, their attempts never work. Look, this is you, okay? <laughs> Winning multiple BAFTAs, Black Books' realistic approach to retail was what made it a success, though it's doubtful this shot would have survived the recession. Are you in pain? Um, not enough! Where they gone? Number three, the thick of it. Peter Capaldi has no shortage of iconic roles under his belt. Yeah, yeah, I know you. You know Jackie f***ing Chan about me. But before taking on the mantle of the UK's best-loved Time Lord, he starred as Number 10's foul-mouthed enforcer, Malcolm Tucker, teaching us some of the most inventive swear words this side of the Atlantic. I love it, it's the pre-match spy for the big super gay weight title fight, eh? <laughs> okay, Oliver. The thick of it essentially portrays British politicians as a bunch of inept no-hopers who refuse to commit to policies and typically fail to get anything done, all while Tucker wields his unrelenting wrath. If Capaldi's particular character is even close to real life, then British politics and bad language apparently go hand in hand. You're also mental. Jesus Christ, see you, you're a omni shambles, that's what you are. You're like that coffee machine, you know, from bean to cup, you f up. Number two, the IT crowd. The nerds who work down in the IT department go ignored in most workplaces, including the fictional corporation Renham Industries, where only the audience of this celebrated sitcom really sees what Roy, Moss and Jen get up to. Oh, four! I mean five! I mean fire! This fan favourite show pokes fun both at the supposed computer experts and the people upstairs, who can barely even get a computer to turn on. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? It also explores the central trio's lives outside of work, though they don't really have much going on. All in, it's relatable to anybody who's ever had to explain how a computer works, an arduous task at the best of times. Did you see the match last night? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Did we? Whoa. Whoa. Wow. What a match! Number one, The Office. The show that put the mockumentary format on the map, The Office is one of the most successful sitcom franchises of all time, even spawning a successful US adaptation, and there aren't many of those around. I'd say, uh, at one time or another, every bloke in the office is woken up at the crack of dawn. What? Tackling the everyday life of a weary and worn-down office staff working for a paper company, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant sure struck gold when they brought this to the BBC. Can this wait, David? Uh, yeah, but if I tell you there's pornography, sexist pornography, which I hate, going around the office, then do you want it to wait? Pornography? The ultra-boring world of office admin is realism at its peak, and these characters are all too recognisable. So, it's no surprise that The Office is so highly regarded. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.